Welcome biologists. In this session we're going to look at terms they use in biology specifically to do with experiments. Uh, these terms come up all the time in the exams, they're on every academic year. First one we're going to look at is accuracy. This is the closeness um, of the measurement that you're trying to measure to the actual value and it's quite nice to demonstrate in this left hand image over here. You can see that in this one here that the measurement is true to the actual value, it hits the target dead on. Whereas in this part here, you can see that it's inaccurate measurement. It is not close to that true value. Quite often, students will say in the exam that something has gone wrong with an experiment because someone has made a mistake. For example, misreading a reading. It is really, really unlikely you would ever get a mark for this in the exam. Um, in terms of improving the accuracy of results obtained, this is normally due to changes in the experiment that improve the accuracy. So how can you be closer to that true value? So for example, using a colorimeter rather than judging the eye color would be better because judging with your eye is subjective, whereas using a colorimeter is not. And this is an example of how we could improve the accuracy of the results. Another way to improve accuracy of results is like using things like a caliper rather than a ruler. The caliper is a lot more accurate and closer to that true value that you're trying to measure. Next term is an anomaly, and this is where we have a data point which does not fit in with the data set that you've collected. Really important here in that you identify anomalous, re anomalous results by doing repeats. You do not identify anomalous results by calculating a mean. That doesn't make sense. By calculating a mean, it doesn't show you what an, anom what an anomalous result is. Doing repeats will allow you to identify an anomalous result. Now, if you do have a, an anomalous result, it can make the standard deviation larger or increase, which would cause the repeatability to decrease. And we're going to look at repeatability later on in the video. Confidence, this is where you can say you are confident within your results, that you're confident that conclusion is accurate based upon what the results are showing you. And normally we use confidence intervals when we're looking at critical values, for example, in the t-test or the chi-squared or the Spearman's rank. And this is what we mean by um, those data sets that we were talking about. We can be confident at the 5% level, the 1% level, that our results, um, that there is a significant difference between two means or whatever the stat is that you're looking at. In terms of error, this is the difference between a measurement and their true value. And we can use this formula to calculate the percentage error of a experiment or a calculation of a um, value from a result. Errors in science, as mentioned before, you normally get marks for talking about random or systematic. You, um, you don't get marks talking about blunders. You don't get marks for talking about the scientist made a mistake. But you can get marks for random errors. These are normally small and they normally impact upon some of the um, results, for example, a subjective um, subjective changes. For example, someone might think something is brick red, but someone else might think that it is a dark orange. Systematic errors tend to affect all measurements in the same direction because you're not measuring things the way that you should. The next one is precision, and this is the closeness of results of different measurements obtained under the same conditions. And this is a really nice diagram here that represents this. This is taken from a document that OCR um, gives out for A-level biologists based upon typical, typical mistakes that students make, which I will post underneath this video after. So we've got here the precision is where you can see in this video, sorry, in this image here that I've got several red crosses really, really close to each other, whereas in this one they're not close. So this, this diagram here shows it being precise and this one is not precise. This just shows you some other examples of where I can combine accuracy and precision. They're not the same thing. This one up here is accurate and precise. Accurate because it's it represents that true value, it's measured the true value and it's precise because all of those measurements are really close together. And this one here is inaccurate because it's not measuring uh, close to that true value. However, they are precise because all of those values are very, very close together. And these two just represent inaccurate and imprecise. Repeatability, this is where um, we can produce reproduce an experiment to get the precise results over a short time scale by one person or the same group using the same equipment and usually in the same place. 
Now, the higher the repeatability, the lower the standard deviation. So the higher the repeatability means you're getting the same result or similar results every time, which means I'm going to get less spread of the data around the mean, which means a lower standard deviation. If I have a lower repeatability, this means that I'm getting a wider spread of data around the mean, which means I'm getting a higher standard deviation. Really, really common question, this one might come up this academic year. Here's what they say about it, the advice from OCR. They do not like the term repeat reliability. They like the terms repeatability, confidence and reproducibility. So please make sure you know the difference between them. Quite common you get multiple choice questions on these. So here's some data set just having a look upon which one is more repeatable. The one that is more repeatable is this one here because it has the lowest standard deviation and therefore the spread of the data around the mean is going to be higher. You're going to have a closer spread of the data around the mean. Reproducibility, this is where we get precise results that are produced over a wider time scale, but this time we're using different people. So it's about having a really good method that different people can follow so that you get the similar results each time. So if they ask you to improve a method to improve the re reproducibility, you're looking to see what further information you need so that other people can repeat this experiment and get the same results. So we're talking here about systematic methods, for example, measuring using quadrats at um, certain intervals, for example, every five meters or something like that. We also need to make sure that we're being really clear about control variables here so that we can reproduce the method. Resolution, this is the smallest change in the quantity being measured that can be detected by an instrument. Um, and we can look at this in terms of microscopes, which fits in quite nicely. So the microscope that has the highest resolution is the TEM. We also get things like this that come up in the exam in terms of, I think the question was asking you which one's most accurate. The reason why equipment R is the most accurate is because the scale has a higher resolution. So it's linking several terms in here to get that marking point. Uncertainty, this is where I use equipment and on the equipment it tells you that your true value of 25 millilitres I'm trying to measure with this pipette I could vary between 0.03 millilitres and you can use a formula to work out the percentage uncertainty of what you're measuring whereby on this pipette my um, variety I could get is 0.08 millimetres I divide that by 25 which is the volume I'm measuring in this pipette times 100 which equals 0.32% uncertainty now if you're using this pipette twice you'd have to times this by 2 so be wary of that for your exams validity this is where a measurement is valid if it measures what you're supposed to be measuring now the key things here are talking about control groups and control variables. If you don't have a control group and you don't control your control variables enough, it means you will not get a valid experiment and valid data. So quite often you get asked, how can I improve an experiment to create a more valid conclusion or valid results? And as mentioned here on the advice by OCR, they really like it when you talk about control variables and also the control. So just a couple of questions to get you thinking here about what this means. A control group is where you would normally not subject it to the independent variable. You'd not subject it to what you're changing so that you can compare what you have changed to something that you don't change. Um, you read that it also includes why you'd use a control. The control variable are uh, variables that you need to make sure you keep the same in the investigation so that they don't manipulate the results. Some typical uh, control variables include things like the same species, the same age, the same surface area, the same um, con concentration or temperatures or volumes and all the same volumes. Um, so any of those are typical ones that we get marks for. The ones that you will not get marks for in terms of control variables are ones that are given in the question. So make sure you're annotating your questions so that you don't make any mistakes there. So guys, good luck with your exams. Don't forget, don't use the words it, they, mountain and size. Hit the like button and subscribe and leave a comment below. Good luck with your exams.